Our guest says many investors are heading into the end of the year on the defensive, but they might have it all wrong. He's got some reasons to be bullish on the markets in 2016. Joining us, David Burrows, President and Chief Investment Strategist and Lead Manager of the Global Macro Pool at Barometer Capital Management. Just remind us, what is the Global Macro Pool? So uh, Global Macro Investing is a mandate that allows a manager really to go anywhere across asset classes, geographic regions, various industry groups to build portfolios that are really relevant sort of in the current market environment. It's also long short. So you think we're in a long, one of the themes that you're hitting is you think we're in a long term secular bull market in consumer stocks or consumer led stocks in the developed countries. Right. So, so with my strategist hat on, my job is to try to identify where the flows are going. Mm -hmm. And after a long period of time, 2000 through 2012, where developed markets did very poorly because input costs were going up on commodity prices and so on, uh, the change in the way that oil is produced really caused a secular change for consumer-led markets. Uh, and after many years of difficulty, you know, specifically the U.S., you know, has uh, uh, falling debt levels at the consumer level, improving house prices, improving employment, strong free cash flow, mm -hmm. uh, and low energy prices. And you've got household formation, which was at 60-year lows mm -hmm. two years ago, starting to accelerate. So that's new consumers coming to the market at the margin. And that should be really good for uh, consumer-oriented companies and uh, other sectors that are sort of in the path of that same theme. I know later you're going to be talking about stocks you like. Home Depot would fit that bill, for yeah, example. Yeah, and that's been one yeah. we've talked about many times on yeah, BNN, the market sure. call, for, for the last two years. Um, other stocks leading the way, tech and healthcare. Uh, we, you wouldn't normally think of tech as being a consumer area, but I, I guess well, Apple, Samsung. If you think about what's going on, you have, you have a strengthening consumer. Uh, and because of that, financial stocks benefit in a bunch of different ways. Corporations haven't had to build a lot of new capacity, but they are needing uh, productivity. And so many of the large companies have extremely strong balance sheets. They can spend money to become more productive, uh, and there's new ways that they're doing that. Uh, and then, of course, healthcare is the biggest domestic industry in the U.S. and the biggest beneficiary of some of the secular themes in the U.S. US economy. So you, you think we're going to go on seeing weakness in materials and energy, and that's a reason to be careful and wary of Canada? Right. So the reason you get a secular bull market or multi-year bull market, and we, I would say we consolidated this year, uh, is because there's some big shift. And the shift that's been taking place is this energy theme. Uh, and so in a bull market, leadership tends to be persistent. And where people get themselves into trouble is constantly looking for what is the next thing. Think back to the 90s. Tech, consumer, healthcare. 10 years, right? And so you can get counter trend rallies, but really you're, you should be trying to stay with what it is that's working, not guess what will work next. On the other side, uh, mass manufacturing of energy means that any marginal c price of oil above the cost of production mm -hmm. will be bet by new supply, as we see. That's interesting. So energy being manufactured as opposed to the traditional way of Yeah, producing. five years ago you drilled a hole, you had a 50% chance of success. Today you drill a hole with fracking and 3D seismic. It's a 99.8% chance of success. So you know it's there. So you know it's there. So there's capital available for a 100% chance of success if you can do it above the cost of production. So the moment the price goes above the cost of production, the money comes in. And I mean, you can turn on production in 12 or 14 days, where six, seven years ago, 45 or 60 days, and offshore, you know, a year. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't expect to see the price of oil much above the cost of production, and probably for a while it's going to be below the cost of production until you get a bunch of restructuring and bankruptcies. That's interesting. The nature of oil has changed. The response time is much quicker. Right. Now think about what... Uh, plentiful energy at low prices means to the biggest consumer economy on the planet. It's huge. Right? I mean, SUV sales are soaring in the right. States. So now it doesn't have to be all at once. It's just a slow, steady improvement. And slow, steady improvement is a great thing in the stock market with low inflation. So I know that people are concerned. There's lots of things we've been through over the last 10 or 12 years. But we're in a world that is slowly getting better for the consumer, certainly for the U.S. And now you've got uh, a new generation coming up and through to start to form households. Mm -hmm. So that's good for housing, it's good for the financials, it's good for consumer companies. And if you're a big company with a strong balance sheet, 
a little bit rise, a little bit of a rise in interest rates doesn't hurt you. If you've got a brand that you can charge for, then you can have pricing power, at the same time have low expenses. Uh, and so uh, given the choices, where else are you going to go? And before we, you're staying with us for a second block, you're going to have your stock picks after this. But emerging markets, you're not you're not going into those anytime soon. Look, China is going to continue to go through its restructuring. They're moving towards a consumer economy. That's not good if you're a materials producer, right? So that's not good for emerging markets. It's not probably good for Canada overall in some ways. Uh, it's not good for certain currencies. And again, that's not going to change anytime soon. This is going to be a long, drawn-out process. David has very kindly agreed to stick with us for another block. He's going to be back after the break. He's going to tell us about some of his, stock, his top stock picks for the new year. We'll be right back.